this here question has two boxes stacked up on one another. They're connected by pulley and they're touching. So this brings together all the concepts from the multi-body problems, which make use of action-reaction pairs, right, when they're in contact, and also involves a pulley. So all the things we've done on the ideal pulley also gets added to the mix, right? It's just putting all these concepts together. When things get complicated, thing you want to rely on is really the first principles. So we'll still be doing free body diagram, F equals MA for each of the bodies, and then relating things as we go. That's the best way to navigate more and more complex problems. So the first thing to note is that as this 20 newtons here is pulling on the two kilogram block, because of this attachment to pulley, you would imagine that the two kilogram block on the bottom will get pulled to the right. And then as a result of this rope, the block on top would be pulled to the left. And all the while they're rubbing against each other. There's a bit of an assumption here, since they're not giving us the static friction coefficient, we have to assume that the static friction has been overcome and there is indeed motion happening. Further assumptions, we have an ideal pulley here. So the tension along both sides of the rope would have the same magnitude, even though they may have different direction. And we'll call that T. Furthermore, we also assume that the rope is ideal so that however much the two kilogram block moves to the right is however much the one kilogram block moves to the left. And you derive that a couple of times, that means they have the same magnitude of acceleration. And we'll call that A. We'll assign the direction once we've decided our coordinate systems. So these are assumptions, of course, but it's fairly standard assumption. And so having laid all that groundwork down, it's time to start solving the question. Anytime a multiple problem, a good way to start is if you have two bodies, you draw two free body diagrams, right? One free body diagram per body. Sometimes if a clump moves together, you can treat that as one body. But in this case, the two boxes move in opposite direction. So treat them as two separate bodies. You have box one and box one is being tugged on by the rope. So it's got some tension. It's on earth. So you got M1G. Uh, subscripts going to be very important for any multi-body problems, of course. So you know which mass you're talking about. And it's touching box 2. So between box 1 and 2, there's some normal force. And also friction force. Since you know that the box 2 and box 1 is sliding against one another, the friction acts opposite to that. So on box 1, it tries to make it not slide, therefore pulls back to the right. We can assign a corner system. There's no reason not to use horizontal and vertical in this case because all the movement is expected to happen along the horizontal. So we'll call that X. And we also know that the friction is related to the normal force by the coefficient of kinetic friction. Now they do give us two separate ones, which happens to be the same number, but it's still good to keep that separated, right? You're given the coefficient between the upper and lower block. And so we will call that mu one, two. And the one between block two and the bottom surface, we'll call that mu two s. Right? In case they are different, it's good practice to use separate uh, labels to keep that all clear. So that's the free body diagram for body number one. Box number two will have a few more forces on it. It's got the tension in this case also pulling away from the box to the left. It's got the 20 newtons that's given, so you just draw that in is touching box one. And that normal force always push away from the surface. So since the surface is on top, the normal force onto from one is pointing downwards. And because they're action reaction pair, we know that size wise, it would be the same as Fn12. Friction, right? Box two is sliding to the right relative to box one. So then again, you can think of it as action reaction pair, equal magnitude and opposite direction. You're on Earth, so you have M2G, and you're of course touching the bottom surface. So there's a normal force, 2S associated with that, and also a friction force to counteract again that sliding to the right. FF2S, of course, is equal to mu2S, normal force 2S. There are many pieces here, but ultimately the thing we want is A2. 
but we probably still have to go through all the different equation and try to boil it down. So once your FBD is done, the next step is usually the sum of forces step. So we do so for body one, and the sum of forces is equal to m1 times the acceleration of one. Given this corner system, the acceleration is expected to be in the negative i direction. We have to make sure to put that in to have the acceleration consistent between the two boxes. And then all the forces in the respective i and j. Ultimately, we want to deal with the acceleration and the tension, which is in the i. But before that, we need to get the normal force to get the friction properly. So let's look at the j component first. There's no acceleration along that direction. And since these two forces add up to zero, they must equal one another. With that, then we can move on to the I component, subbing in the friction already. But right now we can't do very much with that because we don't know the acceleration and we don't know tension. So let's move on to body two. Using the same corner system, we don't have to, but it, one less complication, I suppose. And this here, the acceleration is expected to go in the positive x direction in this case. The sum of forces statement is a little lengthier. Whew, actually managed to squeeze that on one line. Just listing them out, right, as you see on the free body diagram. No surprise there. Then to look at the j component, again, to help us get to the friction, right, listing all the forces. And in this case, there's two normal forces happening, so it's really good that we go through this emotion to find that the one we don't know, Fn2s, is a combination of the normal force from on top and the weight of box two. You know, intuitive it ends up making sense because we know that the normal force from on top is the weight of the top box, right? So the bottom forces support both the boxes, right? The total mass in a sense, but that's not something you have to memorize, right? It's just, you follow through the rules, do sum of forces, listing all the forces, and solve. So this gives us the friction force on the bottom using that kinetic coefficient of friction. So then we can take that and sub it in to the i hat. So then we can put the i hat together, subbing in both those friction. Those subscripts on those masses are extremely critical. And we end up with another equation, which again has acceleration and tension in it. So we can't do very much about that. But now that we have two equation, both have acceleration and tension in them, we can combine and solve, right? We can use one to solve for T and sub it into the other. But many, in many of these cases though, there's a way to add and subtract these equations that might be a little faster. And that's what I'll do. So I'll write both the equations that we have right now. So far from box one, we have that, and then we just got this from box two, right? If we label the top equation, equation one, second one, equation two, to keep A, we want to eliminate T, right? If they have both negative T on both of them, we can just subtract them one from the other. So in this case, I'll take two and minus the one, right? Which is the same as multiplying the whole top by a negative sign, which means that this becomes a plus. This becomes a plus and we introduce a negative there so that you have a plus T adding up with a minus T and all the T's go away. Stacking them up, you have M1A plus M2A. So that's, you can combine them like that. You have the friction from on top and also the friction on the bottom, right? You can certainly look at this and reinterpret, I guess, that you are actually responsible for accelerating both of these bodies, right? M1 plus M2 times A. And there's the friction acting twice between the two blocks. There's a friction on the ground and there's 20 newtons, right? In hindsight, you know, it all makes a lot of sense. But all this is very situation dependent. It's very easy to get it wrong if you just try and jump to this at the very end, right? Going through the basic principle of free body diagram, making sure you get all your forces right, all the direction right, force reaction pairs, relating things, and then combining equations would get you to the correct answer every single time. The rest, of course, subbing and calculate the work. Just gonna be a little lazier and write GSG. And also the combined masses are three kilograms, giving you 1.8 meters per second square. 
it's reassuring that at the end we get a positive number because otherwise all direction would be all kinds of weirdness. But the positive number implies that our direction has been treated properly and it does in fact move to the right. Putting that all that together to a final nice pretty looking sentence to actually answer the question, the acceleration is a vector, right? We're talking about the vector acceleration has that magnitude and that direction, right? You can't just say positive x because we define what positive x was. We have to say to the right.